So today we'll be going over allowable stress design and something that's often called as a factor of safety. Now let's use a previous example from a video that was recently done. Now let's say we have this column of whatever material and we have an external force F being applied to this column. Now usually we could calculate the stress of this column which is a force per unit area but when it comes to designing a column such that it will be able to support a certain maximum load let's say we don't want the stress within the material due to this external force. We wouldn't want it to exceed that yield strength of the material itself. And the yield strength is essentially is when the material starts to plastically deform. And that's what we mean by failure. When a material starts to plastically deform, that means it's failed. And we do not want the stress to exceed this um, yield strength of it. So there won't be any plastic deformation, only elastic deformation going back to your material science course. Now, for the most part, as long as you're below the yield strength that's developed within the material, you should be good. However, we do have um, this thing called a factor of safety, FS. And essentially, it's a certain number. Let's say we have a factor of safety of 1. That means the stress developed within the material will be the same as the yield strength. So the factor of safety is actually equivalent to the fail stress, the stress that it will fail or the yield strength divided by the allowable stress. Now, most of the time we want a factor of safety greater than one such that the stress developed in the material will not be close to the yield strength because that's when it could fail. Now, the main reason we want additional factor of safety greater than one is ma mainly due to any inconsistencies in the material. Um, there could be uh, Depending, even though it may be the same material, um, it could have slight variations when it comes to the material properties and so forth. So the factor of safety is nothing more to ensure that any potential defects in the materials are still taken into account using this factor of safety. So depending on what industry, let's say civil and civil engineering, they usually use a factor of safety ranging from two to five, and um, so yeah, you could actually calculate what allowable stress you would want or you would design your your object um, such that it won't get near that yield strength or the failure failure strength stress. So just to reiterate the equation for the factor of safety is the stress at which the material will fail divided by the stress that we are allowing it to go to. So let's go ahead and do an example. Now, I just want to mention this same factor of safety is also applied to the shear stress. So it's going to be the failure shield stress or the yield shield strength divided by the allowable shield stress. And these are usually used when it comes to the design of the structures. So the stress developed within the materials of any structure will not get near that failure stress because we want to avoid that. We want to avoid plastic deformation. So for this problem statement, we have the joint is fastened together using two bolts. Determine the required diameter of the bolts if the shear stress, if the failure shear stress for the bolts is 350 megapascals. Use a factor of safety for shear of 2.5. So here is my drawing. I drew it as best as I could when it comes to this. So we see we have um, a total of two plates. We have um, three plates actually. So we have one plate here, one in the bottom, and another plate here. Now as you can see the external load being applied is one of the plates is being pulled with a force of 80 kilonewtons and the other two are also being pulled but it's divided in half 40 kilonewtons for one of the plates the other one's 40 kilonewtons. So this tells us it's in static equilibrium, right? So we also see that the force is applied right at the center of the plate geometrically speaking 30 millimeters and 30 millimeters here. And here is a side view of these plates where we have those bolts. Um, so looking to the side, 
so where now a question to ask yourself is where exactly um, will the bolts shear when it comes to these plates being pulled with a force? Now in this case we're looking at from the perspective of designing the bolt itself and not the plate so we're only focusing on the bolt itself. Now when it comes to the shear you see that if the plate to the right is pulled to the right and the other two to the left we have one plane here being sheared off, right? We have one force going this way and another force opposing it. We also have this portion. So for each bolt, we have two shear planes is what we call it. And of course, cross-sectional area of each of those bolts is um, circular, right? So this is going to be the shear plane and our cross-sectional area is the equivalent to the pi r squared. So this is where the problem statement asks us determine the diameter. So it will be better in this case using this formula pi fourth diameter squared to solve for the diameter directly here. So now we know what the cross-sectional area of the bolts is. Now the factor of safety was already given being equal to 2.5 and the allowable or the no the actual the failure shear stress is 350 mega pascals so with this information given it should be sufficient to be able to solve for the unknown which is the diameter of the bolts now keep in mind um the shear planes we have two shear planes per bolt but we have to consider the other bolt as well so we have in total of each bolt has two shear planes so that that means for the other bolt we also have another two shear planes two two places where that bolt is trying to be sheared off so in total we have four shear planes there so think of it like adding the cross-sectional areas times four if you like so now going back and using this equation, the factor of safety is equal to the failure shear stress divided by the allowable shear stress. Now we could just do some algebraic manipulation since we have the failure shear stress as well as the factor of safety. Then we're able to actually calculate the allowable shear stress, which gives us 140 mega pascal so now we have the allowable shear stress in which we're going to be using for the design because keep in mind we do not want the the stress to come close to the failure stress due to any potential um, variations in material properties or some unknown factors such as it could be to any um it could be to corrosion um, rust and so forth which actually would decrease the strength of the material over time. So this is nothing more to account for any potential unknowns that we are unaware of. So now going back to what exactly is the shear stress? Well, it's equal to the shear force divided by the cross-sectional area. Now, in this case, we already know what that shear force is, right? Because it's being pulled apart 80 kilonewtons, right? So we have that figured out and the allowable shear stress is going to be this shear stress. So we have this known and this known as well. Now, when it comes to the cross sectional area, remember, keep in mind, we're not dealing with one bolt. We're dealing with two bolts. And when it comes to the bolts being sheared off, it's actually being sheared off at multiple points. Now, let's say if it was only being sheared off at one point, then we will only consider one of those cross-sectional areas. However, we're considering a total of four parts that it's being sheared off. So in this case, it's going to be four times that cross-sectional area, which is pi fourth diameter squared. Now, of course, we could just do some algebraic manipulation, bring the diameter to the other side and solve accordingly. Now, let's go ahead and do that. So now bringing the diameter to the other side, square rooting both sides, you get the 80 kilonewtons divided by the pi because the four cancels out here. And we have 140 mega pascals. Keep in mind the units. We have kilo, mega, giga, tera, and so forth. 
um, and we know the unit of Pascal's newtons per meter squared. So in this case, 140 meg megapascals is equivalent to 140,000 kilopascals. And I went ahead and converted it to kilonewtons per meter squared such that we actually get unit cancellation. So always be aware of the units and they must cancel out such that the unit that you get at the end of the day makes sense. Because in this case, it's going to be meter squared square root. The square is canceled, and so the diameter is going to be in meters, which makes perfect sense, right? So now the diameter of those two bolts should be at least 0 0.013 meters. Or if you want, we could convert this to millimeters, which is actually 13 millimeters for the diameter of each of those bolts. So this is how you use this this allowable stress design, the factor of safety, it's also um, known as the design factor. Um, you, you keep in mind the factor of safety is always going to be greater than one because we do not want that um, stress developed in the material to be near the failure stress or the yield strength of that material. And this is exactly what you will be using to de design structures and such so um, it will not fail so it won't plastically. So it's a very um, important concept. Now if you're a little bit confused when it comes to the cross-sectional area, we can actually go ahead and simplify the problem and have just two plates instead of the three plates that we had in the original problem statement. And let's just assume we have one bolt across the two plates here. Now you see, if we had a force pulling this plate and then the other one for static equilibrium, right? The point in which the bolt will feel that sheer, sh sheer force will be this only that part do we have a force going one way and the force going the other such that you kind of want to um, shear that bolt right off and so in that case if we were to do the calculations it would only be one cross-sectional area so we would not multiply it by four so just keep that in mind the more cross-sectional areas you have that's where the four came. That's why we multiply by four because we had multiple cross sections being sh sheared off in this instance. So just keep that in mind. And the more you practice this, the easier it gets, and you're able to identify um, how at what portions is the, any object trying to be sheared off, and that's how you calculate the the allowable shear stress for the design.